Hello everyone, on today's video uh, we're going to be taking a look at the Airbus A320. Uh, when I originally sat down and said, oh let's do a how to fly series on this particular plane, it suddenly hit me that there's going to be a little bit too much going on in this particular aircraft to be able to kind of do it in a single video. So the next series of videos is basically going to be dedicated to kind of all the pieces you need to be thinking about in order to safely fly this plane. Keep in mind as always, I don't fly these things professionally. Uh, people who do make wonderful, wonderful video series as far as explaining the really little intricate minutiae, but for me I'm just going to kind of show you the way that I do it that keeps me out of trouble in places like VATSIM and it'll probably give you a pretty positive experience. So the first problem uh, we're going to take a look at today is going to be that of flight planning. So uh, what we intend to do here is basically show you the different methods that you can use for planning a flight as well as the different tools available. The first tool you have at your disposal is going to be the good old-fashioned Microsoft Flight Simulator Flight Planner. Now a lot of people are probably going to go, oh boy, that's not going to work so well, but it's actually a decent tool. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, little wall map. By the way, if you can't see what you're interested in, you can always go down to filters and you can turn the weather on and off. Like you'll notice if I flip the clouds on, I suddenly can't see anything. You can also set it to precipitation. You can shut it off. You can even turn on a neat little wind effect if you're trying to understand. This is all pretty cool stuff that I really need to mess with more often. Haha, <laughs> look at that. I love that. So anyway, to head inside Flight Simulator, if we want to go ahead and create a flight plan for the purposes of airline or really any aircraft, we simply find our destination or where we take, I should say, departure point. Let's say, let's say Mari Kaibo. And let's see, we go ahead and pick our destination, which is going to be uh, Sierra Victor Mike, India, which is going to be uh, Simon Bolivar, which is uh, going to be a little bit over in that way. Now, in Flight Simulator, if we want to generate an airliner style map, or I should say a flight plan, all we have to do is come up here and select what type of IFR airways we're going to be interested in. Now, with airliners, we always fly IFR. I mean, technically, you could fly at VFR, especially if you're just, you know, kind of doing some general kind of tooling around. But in general, you're always going to be flying IFR. And when you're working with jet aircraft, you're almost universally going to be using what they call high altitude airways, which are going to be basically the jetways that are at very, very high altitudes. I turn this one on, you can see that it will automatically suggest three different flight plans that I can take here. We've got this one right here, we've got this one in the middle, we've got this one over here. What's great about this, and again, I don't hate this tool at all, is it gives you the ability to actually click on it to change which flight plan you're interested in. Like I notice uh, this one here is going to take 38 minutes and it's 282 nautical miles. Uh, that works wonderfully for us. Uh, I also notice that this one here is a little bit more roundabout, and uh, this one down here is significantly more roundabout, but it does take us along, around the beautiful Lake Maracaibo. So keep in mind, um, we're using real world weather today, and as you can see, it is a bit on the stormy side, so um, we got to think about that as well. Next thing we want to consider, I'll go ahead and pick that one that was a little shorter. Oop, uh, where's the 38 one? Yeah, yeah, there you go, 38 minutes. Next thing we need to consider as far as an airliner goes is the fact that when we're working in IFR, we're always going to be interested in how we get to this location, these jetways. Um, again, there's two basic pieces to that. There's the runway we select, which is pretty straightforward. Obviously, pick the runway that's long enough as well as the one that faces the wind. And the second half is going to be your departure procedure. Your departure procedure is basically what's going to dictate um, how you get into this particular position. Now, the nice thing about Flight Simulator, again, is it was smart enough to pick the Asiaba Uno, uh, which is going to be working perfectly for us for this particular purpose. Now, the neat thing is, uh, let's say I want to pick Oyeda. Oyeda, I can't say, I'm sorry, my Espanol no bueno. Um, it gives me the ability to go ahead and pick these and actually preview what they look like. Like you can see, this one is clearly the shortest, and uh, that works well for us. Now that we have our departure, we'll go take a look at our arrival procedure. Arrival, again, is the opposite of departure. It's what's going to get us down to the ground. Um, unfortunately for us in this particular airport, in Simon Bidivar, is that uh, we only have these three particular arrival procedures. If I click one of them, you can see this one's a little, whoa! We have this one, which is, whoa! And then we have this one, which is, hmm, not bad. Not bad. I like that one. So you can see that one's going to give us the most direct route into the ground. We can always come over here now and go ahead and predict what particular instrument procedure we're going to use for landing. Obviously, you want to make sure the wind agrees with your procedure. I can see over here at La Chinta Internacional that you can see that the wind is coming directly out of the north. Over on this side of things, we have no war uh, wind at all. So we can just boop, pick an ILS and be good to go. Now you can see there is my completed flight plan. The last thing you'd have to do in Flight Simulator is you go up to Navigation Log, you select your altitude, you've got to be kidding me, that is way too high altitude. It'll go down to 24,000 feet, that's a lot safer. And then when we're done with that, we can go ahead and click that real quick. Uh, one way to do an idiot check as far as cruise altitudes whenever you're working with these and you don't have the fancy technology is you always want to take a look at how long you spend cruising. The more time you spend cruising, the faster you go. So, you know, if I drop this to, let's say, uh, 18,000 feet, check this out. 
I spent a very long time cruising. However, an airliner is unable to get up to really, really, really high speeds when we go up this high. So you can see, unfortunately, my speed is fairly limited here. So I'll pick something kind of in the middle. Now, this is an interesting discussion, but we'll take a look at that when we look at our other tools today. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Here are all my waypoints all up at the tippy top. And here's my takeoff. This is my departure. Of course, what we want to do is we want to actually dictate this being something that makes small. By the way, you're looking for gates. You're not looking for ramps unless this is a ramp medium. Otherwise, if you're at small airports, like this, uh, you might find yourself in a situation where you can't safely back up or uh, turn your aircraft around. It happens to me plenty of time. You can always zoom in also, and you can see very clearly where all these parking spots are relative to the runway that we're interested in using today. So my flight plan has been picked out. I've selected my takeoff position, my departure. I've picked my arrival. I've picked my approach. Uh, I've gone ahead and selected a cruise altitude. Um, again, the default altitude can be very wrong sometimes, so make sure you just investigate that. And now I have a nice completed flight plan. Pro tip for you. Uh, whenever you are doing any sort of flight plan along this particular technique, highly recommend that you save it down here. It works great. Now, let's go ahead and uh, solve another problem that Flight Simulator can do for us really, really quickly. And that's how much fuel is it going to take to take this particular flight over to our destination here? Well, if I zoom out a teeny tiny bit, you'll probably notice there's this circle here. This is the range circle for the uh, particular aircraft I have selected based on its current fuel profile. Now, if I actually selected it real quick and go to, let's say, weight and balance, let's say I want to go ahead and reduce my fuel to let's do 25%. You'll notice that that ring in the background actually got significantly smaller. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And you can see that now I only have enough fuel for about double the distance I'm going to that destination. So I'm going to go back to it. Uh, that generally is a pretty good rule. Obviously, uh, you can be a little bit more aggressive with these things and try to kind of drag it out even further. But if you do something like that, obviously, you're not going to have much of a reserve. So again, I can drop this probably down to 10%. And then I still have enough range, finger quotes, to get to my destination. But you're basically going to be taking your life into your own hands if you do something like this. Do 10%. Close that, and you can see I have exactly enough fuel to get to my destination because I'm within my range ring here. Uh, be very, very cautious with that. There's a much safer way to do it. Let me show you. There's this neat little website called uh, fuelplanner.com. I kid you not. All you have to do is pick the aircraft you're interested in. For us, we're taking an Airbus A320. Uh, we simply take in where we're taking off from. We take in where we're going to. And then we can go over to the planner button, press plan, and it'll even suggest your recommended fuel on board is 12,649 pounds. Now that was easy. And again, there's other sources we're going to take a look at in a minute that we can use. Let's go dial that into the simulator. All right, so the rule number one with airliners, as people know, is fuel, is the fact you never put fuel in the center fuel tank until you've completely filled the wing tanks. Uh, that has the interesting problem where if your wings are light and the middle of your plane is heavy, you can imagine what's going to happen while, when you go to stress those wings. So we're interested in about uh, 12,900 pounds of fuel here. I'll switch this over to pounds to make my sanity. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. Uh, we can grab this sucker and pull this to the right. Uh, this works pretty well. And we can try to get our number down here as basically as close as we can possibly get. That works pretty well. Uh, we're looking at 12, 6, for nine or so, something like that, 12. Or you can get very, very scientific about it. You could actually pull out a calculator. We could do uh, 12,649 minus 1340 minus 1340 divided by two means we need 4985 in each tank. 4985, 4985. Nice. Ta-da! And now we're extremely, extremely close to the intended amount of fuel that we're carrying. Again, getting the fuel within a pound is pretty impressive if uh, your refueling crew does a nice job there. One of the things you want to watch out for, though, is you don't throw your center of gravity off too, too much here. But now you can see we're ending up with about 27% of our fuel. So that's going to pretty much take care of everything as far as working inside the flight simulator goes. Now, the great thing about this technique is now I can go ahead and go into the flight simulator. Everything's all set up. I start the plane. I just go and I enjoy my flight. Now, this is not bad. And again, now when you're working with this, aircraft this is most of the time we're probably going to be using this tool but for me i like to pull out things that are a little more sophisticated and uh, of those sophisticated tools uh, they're basically two that i like to use all the time uh, the first one is called simbrief uh, this is a free service and basically what it does is it builds flight plans for you i'm actually going to show you what that looks like in a minute the second one of course which everybody's very familiar with if you've been hanging around me long enough is probably over here with a little nav map uh, this is also another wonderful tool because i can literally just come up here i can uh, go ahead and create my little flight plan i can say scmc svmi i can go ahead and uh, read root description it'll go ahead and scan that i'll create a flight plan then i can go up to the uh, flight plan wizard here i can go ahead and dial in my intended cruise altitude press adjust i'll say i want to use jet airways for high altitude flying, I hit calculate. 
And in just a second, it generates a gorgeous flight plan that uses all these lovely VORs to make ourselves uh, might have much, much easier time to actually get there. We're going to actually come up here and let's see here. Avoid RNAV. No, no. I like RNAV. RNAV is good. So you have a really, really smooth flight plan here. Of course, just like we did before, we can now come over here, right click on something. I can go ahead and say uh, show departure procedures. I can go ahead and take a look at them and even preview which each one of these looks like. So let's zoom in a teeny tiny bit. I like that one. I see about uno. Uh, again, we'll go over to America. Look at this one. Oh, that's perfect. It's a little off course, though. So, Ojeda. Oh, this looks good. We'll use this one. So, I'll just right click. I'll go ahead and insert it into my flight plan. Look at that. Uh, now we've got our Rome we're taking off from, and now we have that. We'll come all the way over to Simon Bolivar, and we'll go ahead and pick out exactly where we want to be going. I'll right click here, and we'll go ahead and say show arrival procedures. And uh, just like you saw before, I can go ahead and select which one of these I actually want to see. We can do all procedures too, as well, but that's not exactly what I need. Let's see here, we'll pick ILS-10. ILS-10 looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and insert it. And whoosh, now I have a pretty successful little flight here. Unfortunately, I noticed the fact that I've got these two kind of waypoints just sort of chilling out in the middle of nowhere there. So what I am going to do is I'm actually going to delete this waypoint. I'm actually going to delete the one that precedes it. So now we have a nice smooth plan that gets us all the way down to the ground. Now, the greatest thing about here is uh, now I can actually get a nice little raw fuel report here. I can go up to my flight plan. Let's go up to the tippy top. Uh, flight plan, and now it gives me all the different destinations. It's going to give me my estimations for wind. It's going to give me information about it. It's going to let me know about the different altitudes that I'm going to be interested in. It's going to give me my magnetic courses. It's going to be my distance remaining. It's going to be my lake times. ETA, ETE, it's going to even can give you fuel if you dial in all the details that you need. All right, so with that being uh, taken a look at, we can now go, of course, press up the file. We can go ahead and press uh, export to Microsoft Flight Simulator, and we can literally send this right over to our particular flight simulator. Now, if I pop over to Flight Sim real quick, I can actually come down here, hit load, save, hit load, and then you can actually grab that actually spot that we had just a moment ago. Press open file, and whoosh, it'll load everything in that we just calculated over there in a little nav map. Again, little nav map is a spectacular tool for this process as well. I use it quite a bit, um, not so much for these kind of operations, but I'll show you the other tool, and that was the one I mentioned a few moments ago, which is going to be SimBrief. So what SimBrief does is it basically acts as a dispatching tool. This is uh, free to use. Uh, the only thing you got to watch out for it is the fact that your Eric cycle is uh, going to change. Um, basically, this is all your navigation data. You can see right now my navigation data is about a year and a half old at this particular point, which is just going to get older. And you have to buy it from Navigraph if you do want to use that particular data. It's actually interesting. This used to be an independent thing. It kind of spread out, as you can see. Using this is super easy. You simply create an account with it. We go up to Dispatch. We do Dispatch System. Create New Flight. And then all we have to do is enter a couple of details for our flight. So for example, I'm flying with Pam. Uh, this is a flight 64 naturally, SVMC, SVMI. And what this will do as soon as you dial it in is it'll actually look for flight plans that already exist. Now this is the same technique. I can actually click these and actually see the different recommended real world flight plans. I should say they're not real world flight plans. If you want a real world flight plan, you're gonna have to come over to FlightAware and actually search. If you are using FlightAware, by the way, let's see, we'll do everybody's favorite. Whoa, Snox, KSFO. We'll do uh, KLAX. Oh geez, I wonder how many times people have flown this flight before. And if you actually go onto the website, you can get the flight plan route right off of here. Here. But again, the nice thing about SimBrief is it'll remember people using existing routes. The other cool thing about SimBrief is you can actually come here and you can generate a flight and it will attempt to find the optimum flight plan as well. Again, this will not say outdated if you buy the most recent plans. So anyway, let's go up. I'm happy with this. Uh, let's pick our airframe. Obviously, we're going to be an Airbus A320, uh, 251. And the neat, nice thing about this one right here is you can actually edit this airplane. So if you notice your aircraft in the simulator is burning more fuel than it's predicted, you can actually come in here and tell it it's burning more fuel than predicted. Coming down here, we can select our climb profile, which is 250, 378. We're going to have to remember this next time. We can pick our CI, which is basically, uh, you're saying, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this. Basically, your CI is a relationship between how fast you climb and how much time you spent uh, at cruise altitude. The big thing here is the higher the CI, the f more aggressive your aircraft is going to try to go. Notice the default one's got a little star on it. I happen to like the UCI uh, 100, which means it'll get me there as fast as possible. Uh, the downside, of course, is you're going to burn more fuel. Descent profile, uh, remember this number, you're going to need it later. This is if you're burning more fuel than you expect or less fuel. Here's a registration. Fin number, uh, again, you can dial these all in. Cell cal, ATC, everything's here. Notice it estimates the time. Uh, this is a little longer than our flight really will take. It'll estimate the departure runway. Again, we don't know. If you remember, the wind in the simulator is coming out of the north. So we can actually come in here and do the appropriate thing. Go ahead and set this. Do you wish to automatically select the new one? I'd say, yeah. 
Usually it does a pretty good job of predicting what this should be, but it doesn't always. Taxi time, I'm probably going to spend about 10 minutes of waiting there. Altitude, passengers auto, you can put some extra cargo in here. You got your name if you want to mess with it. And all those other kind of fun things like that. So once we're happy with all that, we can go ahead and pick our flight plan layout. Obviously, you want to pick one that makes sense. Uh, some of these are very difficult to read. I love the Lido format because it's very clear. Units, uh, remember, in Flight Simulator, you're dealing in kilograms when you're working with the Airbus. So you might want to pick that one. Uh, contingency fuel, uh, you can go ahead and st take all the standards. You can either do it by minute or you can do it by percentage. Again, it's whatever your airliner tells you to do. Reserve fuel, obviously, if you're traveling over water, you want a little extra more. And then you've got all these other critical things, and you can even get yourself a nice, super detailed flight map. When you're ready to actually generate your flight plan, you just click on the Generate OFP. Keep in mind, if you've made a mistake, you can always go back and edit it as well. Again, it's totally dependent on what you're trying to do here. So give this a couple moments. And now we get all of our critical information as fast as you can snap your fingers and the most important part is this little guy down here which is going to be giving us all the information we need for our flight every waypoint fuel estimations wind estimations it's going to give us notices to airmen and it gives us these gorgeous little flight plans that include wind along the way at different altitudes it even gives us a good old-fashioned vertical profile here but and this is where it gets even better so if you scroll down here, you can actually export it to all these different flight simulators that you're interested in. Now, one thing I always get a kick out of is that you can export it over to Sky Vector if you wanted to. You can actually take a look at it. And again, you have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of different uh, flight simulators here at your disposal that you could be experimenting with. And again, pick the one that makes most sense. And as we start to see more payware and stuff like that, you're going to be seeing more ideas. Usually when I'm working with SimBrief, I actually do not do the export. Instead, what I choose to do, which I kind of like, is I'll actually take the way points and dial them into the FMS, but that's actually going to be a video for another day. All right, hopefully this has been helpful as far as uh, giving you some understanding of how you can go ahead and plan flights for the um, Airbus, or actually pretty much any aircraft inside a flight simulator. Again, pick the technique you like best. I'm a huge fan of SimBrief, um, even though you have to enter things manually, but if I'm going to be doing a flight like this, it's probably going to be a little bit longer anyway, and I'm probably going to have to do it. But that being said, the Microsoft tool works really, really well. Enjoy.